Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, we will be talking about Kingdom Monera. Kingdom Monera, as we are in our previous video, we have discussed about the five system of classifications, uh, uh, five kingdoms of classification, sorry. The first kingdom would be Kingdom Monera. Okay, starting up with the uh, uh, kingdom, we will be discussing about the different characteristics of the kingdom, the different uh, uh, characters on the basis of which they are categorized into this group and what all characters they basically possess. Now when I say kingdom monera, we are discussing or we are talking about almost all the bacteria. Monerans basically involve bacteria, be it a normal bacteria which we discuss about, be it archaebacteria, cyanobacteria, mycoplasma, you name it and the bacteria are categorized under the monerans. <coughs> They basically have kind of same um, uh, uh, life uh, span or you can say same characteristics also basically basic characters but they are categorized into different groups on the basis of some specific characters which differ, which are different from, which differ from bacteria to bacteria. Now first of all we will discuss about the general characters of bacteria and maybe in my next video I will be making the uh, uh, video on different categories of different bacteria. Now starting up with the kingdom monera, the first uh, um, uh, this character or feature which, which has to be discussed about monerans or you can say bacteria. Now I have, uh, I'll be uh, uh, talking about bacteria basically as I've told you that monerans basically involve the different type of bacteria. First of all we'll make a, a structure of a bacteria and finally then I'll start discussing. Now bacteria they have a capsule present around it. It is a capsule or it is a slimy capsule present around the uh, bacteria which covers the cell wall also. Uh, after this uh, capsule we have the cell wall. Then after the cell wall we have this cell membrane and here in the center we have this coiled DNA which is not enclosed by any nuclear membrane that is the nucleoid. We have polysomes in the bacterial cells. What are polysomes? A group of ribosomes is known as when ribosomes are present in uh, strings or you can say they are present in the form of chains. They are known as polysomes. Then we have scattered RNA scattered inside and then we have an invagination of the plasma membrane which is known as mesosomes which are known as sorry which are known as mesosomes then this whole bacteria in a few bacteria uh, we have a structure known as flagellum we have we can have one bacteria when flagellum suppose we have only one flagellum here these flagella can be like multiple can be spread throughout the body of the bacteria also i'll tell you when i'll uh, uh, come to the topic flagella i'll be discussing about those now the first uh, characteristic is the cell wall. When we talk about the cell wall of bacteria, they are not similar to those of the cell wall of plant cells. As we know that the cell wall of plant cell is made up of cellulose, but here in case of bacteria, the cell wall is made up of peptidoglycans, which are kind of polysaccharides, cross-linking chains, but exactly it's not cellulose. Okay, so the cell wall is there, it's named as cell wall as it gives kind of rigidity but not made up of cellulose, made up of peptidoglycans. Then cell wall and one more feature about bacteria is they don't have any membrane bound organelle present in them. That means they don't have any single membrane or double membrane organelle present. That means they don't have bacteria, they don't have Golgi, they don't have endoplasmic reticulum. Even they don't have a proper nucleus because it is also bounded by nuclear membrane. So that means all the membrane bound organelles are absent in bacteria. They just have ribosomes in the form of polysomes. Why? Because ribosomes are the organelles which don't have, sorry, organelles which don't have membranes. That means ribosomes are polysomes in the form of polysomes they are present in the cytoplasm or the bacterial cell. Now uh, when we label it the outer one would be the capsule which is just a covering a slimy covering present over the bacteria. After capsule it would be the cell wall which is not made up of cellulose but made up of peptidoglycan. Then we have a normal cell membrane as we have, have in I mean, other uh, cells. Then after that, we have these 
uh, we have the uh, like uh, different uh, thread like structures which are visible to you here in bacteria they are known as flagella flagella a singular it's singular when it's a single it's known as flagellum a multi multiple flagella they are known as uh, flagella okay now there are some uh, uh, concepts about a flagella like for example if a bacteria suppose i draw a draw miniature diagram here if a bacteria does not have any flagella it is known as atricus atricus if it has flagella on only one end and does not have any other flagella it is known as lophotricus if it has flagella on both the ends it is known as amphitricus and if it has flagella scattered over its body as i have made in the diagram it is known as uh, it is known as petritricus so when we have no flagella it is atricus we have one at one end it is uh, lophotricus when we have two at both the ends it's amphitricus when it's surrounded by flagella it's known as uh, uh, petritricus so these are the different categories on the basis of flagellum different categories of bacteria on the basis of flagellum now we have discussed about cell walls shape and flagella next is the mesosomes i have labeled i have made an invagination what do you mean? when the cell cell membrane it just invaginates it just moves and folds inside to form a structure that is known as mesosome actually when you study about mesosome its its role is not that much clear but still there are assumptions that it helps in cell wall synthesis that means formation of the cell wall plus it also helps in cellular respiration it also helps because it does not have mitochondria so this mesosome it helps in the process of cellular respiration also to provide energy to the bacteria okay then we have the next structure that is the nucleoid nucleoid now it's it's not known as nucleus because it's because it does not have a nuclear membrane it does not have a nucleolus and it does not uh, have those characteristics it is just a dna strand which is coiled 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 and is placed in the center of the cell and this structure is known as nucleoid okay nucleoid basically performs all the its genetic material um, uh, in the process of reproduction it is passed from one of the bacteria to the next uh, to the different uh, next bacteria hence forming the two bacteria be it asexual or sexual reproduction the movement of genetic uh, material takes place and this is the genetic material not enclosed by any membrane and the structure is known as nucleoid then after nucleoid we have a different category of bacteria basically it does not involve the uh, features of uh, bacteria we have discussed almost all the features uh, which are present here in uh, uh, the bacterial cell the last category is gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria there are some there is a stain or dye which was discovered by uh, named after c gram basically he uh, named this dye c gram so when some of the few bacteria when they are dyed with this gram stain they retain that stain and some of them they don't retain there is a proper procedure in which the bacteria are first stained with the gram stain and then they are treated with iodine and finally with alcohol to decolorize them pehle they are stained with the dye then they are treated with iodine and then they are treated with alcohol so that the dye is removed and finally saffron and stain is put over those bacteria the bacteria some of the bacteria they will retain the stain and will turn like a red pure red that means they had those crystals of the dye present in them and some of the bacteria will have light purple shade they will not get dyed so these on the basis of retaining of the dye the ones which retain the dye are the gram positive bacteria and the one which do not retain the dye are the gram negative bacteria this is a altogether separate topic but is it is a very important topic which comes in the exams also that is what do you mean by gram negative and gram positive bacteria so gram positives are the ones which retain the gram stain and the, and the ones which do not retain are the gram negative why is it so because the gram positive bacteria they have a thick cell wall which has like traces of lipoproteins in it so uh, so uh, lipids sorry in it but they have uh, fats in it polysaccharide molecules in it hence they retain 
the retain they retain the stain due to that thick wall of uh, thick cellular wall and this gram negative bacteria they have a thin wall with only like 20 percent of lipids present in it and hence they cannot retain those uh, uh, gram uh, sorry they those dye crystals so on the basis of the thickness of cell wall and cell membrane uh, cell uh, wall sorry they are categorized on the basis of retaining of the stain and uh, could not uh, are not able to retain the stain they are categorized as gram positive and gram negative bacteria so this was all about the bacterial characteristics of uh, monarins or you can say as I've already discussed monarins basically have all the bacteria these are the characteristic features of bacteria with their structure now in my next video I'll be talking specifically about the categories of bacteria on the basis of their mode of nutrition okay and we'll make a separate video for reproduction because there we'll be discussing about uh, this uh, transformation and transduction which is a very important topic so a separate video will be made for that so in my next video we'll be discussing about nutritional mode there are a few type of bacteria on the basis of the nutrition they take in type of nutrition they uh, take in okay uh, so uh, this is all about the video thank you for liking subscribing please do share the channel share the videos so that uh, uh, a maximum number of children can benefit from the videos. Thank you.